Merry Christmas, everybody. Feliz Navidad. Hope you had a great year. We're going to sing some songs wherever you're at. Come on, join us. You walked with us in flesh and blood. You know our grief because you bled your love. Now we have this hope of you But soon your gates will be walking through The trumpet will sound, the dead will arise The kingdom will come, Lord, come So turn our sorrow into joy Turn our morning into dancing Turn our sorrow into joy Turn our morning into dancing And come again, yeah, 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 yeah Yeah, 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 yeah Oh, yeah, 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 yeah Yeah, 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 yeah oh. The testing is our faith at work More precious than the gold of earth. Yeah, 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 yeah. Refine a help you way in us. Praise arise, the praise arise from the valley's dust. The trumpet will sound, the dead will arise. Your kingdom will come, Lord, come So turn our sorrow into joy Turn our morning into dancing Turn our sorrow into joy Turn our morning into dancing And turn our sorrow into joy Ooh. Turn our morning into dancing Turn our sorrow into joy Turn our morning into dancing And come again Yeah, 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 yeah Yeah, 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 yeah Come again Whatever in the name of Jesus Oh, we want joy Sorrow into joy We ask Oh, we ask Whatever In the name of Jesus We ask Whatever In the name of Jesus Sing, we ask Whatever we ask, whatever in the name of Jesus. Oh, we ask, whatever in the name of Jesus. So turn our burdens, yeah, turn our burdens to blessing, our pain to rejoicing. Joy, we want joy. Turn our burdens to blessing. Pain to rejoice in joy, we want joy. Turn our burdens to blessing, our pain to rejoice in joy, we want joy. Turn our burdens to blessings, our pain to rejoice in joy, we want joy. Turn our sorrow into joy. Turn our morning into dancing Turn our sorrow into joy Ooh. Turn our morning into dancing Turn our sorrow into joy Ooh. Turn our morning into dancing Turn our sorrow into joy Turn our morning into dancing And come again
Amen, amen. Well, hey, it's, it's been a long year, church, and um, one of the things that I want us to kind of think about as we uh, go into this new year is um, the goodness of God. And, and one of the things that stirs up um, the joy in our lives is thinking about the goodness of God. And so wherever you're at, if you're in your house right now and there's someone next to you, if, you're, if someone's in the kitchen baking something sweet, if you got kids upstairs, if you're by yourself, there's someone, I want you to say this out to you. If it's God, it's God. If it's your wife, it's your spouse. If it's your friends, if it's your kids. I want us to stir up the joy of the Lord by testimony. So take a few seconds, 10, 15 seconds, and look to the person left, to the person right to you, and, and tell them the goodness of God. How has he been good to you this past year? Because this will stir up joy in your life. So you take 10 seconds right now. Good morning, City Rev. So glad that we can come together like this, even in our own homes after Christmas. Hope you and your family had a wonderful Christmas. Look, we've got something important that we need to talk about right off the bat. And it's about one particular Christmas tradition that I, look, I just don't totally understand. 
And I, I love all kinds of Christmas traditions. I love Christmas ornaments and Christmas cookies, but there's one in particular I'm struggling to understand. Maybe some of you can help me out. In fact, if you have some insight, you wanna put it in the comments, you can right there, but we gotta talk about this right here. This right here is, well, in my mind, this is a fruit cake, but it is called a traditional Italian oven baked cake. I think it's Italian, okay? I think it's called penatoni. That's how I'm going to pronounce it. Maybe you know the actual way to pronounce it, but I see this all over every year. I see this sold and I, you know, no offense to anyone, maybe this is part of your tradition. I haven't met anyone who loves this, this as it's called cake yet. And this year I, I had to try it, okay? So this year I got myself uh, some of this Italian cake and when I first opened it, I was met with a very unique smell, okay? It, it smells like raisins and burnt oranges. That's how I would describe the, the smell. And, and I, I tasted it, and when I tasted it, it tastes just like raisins and burnt oranges, just like you might think it would. Okay, and when I see this, I should have been warned. I mean, it's, it says it right there on the box, shows a big picture but it calls it a cake. And I, that, you know, honestly, that offends me a little bit because I think if there's a cake, there are certain ingredients that have to be present in a cake. The ingredients with this is there's a lot of bread and then there's all different kinds of dried fruit in there. But for it to be a true cake, in my mind, there has to be some kind of frosting slathered all over it, okay? There's gotta be something drizzled on it. There's gotta be some kind of sugar, some kind of glaze all around it. This, in my mind, is a fruit bread. They're just calling it a cake so that we get it, but it's missing the key ingredients. Okay, I tell you all of that. Um, I tell you all of that because um, we are about to go into a brand new year. We're about to come into just the next few days, a whole new, new year, and we don't know what we're gonna open up when we enter into that year. Maybe it's gonna be an incredible year. Maybe it's going to be like a seven layer German chocolate cake. I'm hoping it's that kind of year. Maybe it's going to be a decadent red velvet cake kind of year, or, or maybe a juicy upside down pineapple cake or something like that. Or, you know, who knows? Maybe it's not what we expect. Maybe we open up the new year and it's some kind of gluten-free keto zucchini bread, all right? And I think we can all agree we're all hoping it's not that. Okay, but whatever the year is, here's what I want you to know. What, however this new year turns out, we have all of the key ingredients we need. No matter what this year holds, you already have all the key ingredients you need for joy. No matter what happens, you have everything you need for this year to be full of joy. Actually, that's what we're gonna be talking about as a church for these first few weeks in the year, a brand new series all about how this year can be full of joy. I wanna make sure that you know that so you can join us this upcoming Sunday, this next Sunday, January 2nd. We want you to join us as we're digging deeper into how can we find the kind of joy that no matter what happens, it cannot stop the joy in our lives. Because I don't know about you, but that's what I want. I want the kind of joy that's unstoppable, that someone can't steal from me, the kind of joy that it doesn't matter what happens in my day or what goes right or what goes wrong. It doesn't matter if the plans and hopes that I have for this year go right, that nothing can change my joy. If I was able to tell you that, look, this year is gonna be a year that is just dominated with joy, no matter what else happens, man, wouldn't that be such good news? Well, that's what we're gonna talk about. And maybe you say, look, I. I would love to have that. I just don't know how to have that kind of joy in my life. How do I do that? I wanna show you a passage in the Bible uh, today. It's in the book of Philippians. In fact, our entire uh, series is going to be on, uh, out of the book of Philippians. And I wanna show you one part of what Philippians says about joy. So if you have a Bible or Bible app and you wanna open to Philippians chapter one, take a look at verse 12. This is a letter written by a guy named Paul uh, to the Christians in Philippi who are his friends. But more importantly, this is God's word. This is from God to us. Here's what it says in Philippians chapter one. Look at verse 12. He says this, I want you to know brothers that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. 
So for starters, he says, look, you know something has just happened to me and what it is that happened to me is serving to get the gospel out. Paul is a preacher. He's telling anyone he, he knows. He's, he's someone who's been so impacted by the message of who Jesus is and what Jesus has done that he's given his entire life to letting anyone he comes across know about that good news about the gospel. And he says, something just happened to me. And it is, it, it's served to help the gospel go out, the message of Jesus go out. So what's happened? I mean, what has just happened in Paul's life? Maybe he got a great opportunity to stand in front of the Roman Senate or stand before Caesar or before some other significant person or in front of a lot of people. Maybe, maybe that happened. What has just happened in Paul's life that is serving to advance the gospel? Well, let's look in verse 13. He, he gives us an idea. Let's keep going. So that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to all the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ. And most of the brothers, having become confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Here's what's just happened to Paul. He got imprisoned. Paul just got put in jail. Now, jail in these ancient times, I mean, imagine like a dungeon. Imagine just stone walls, stone floor, thick iron chains. Uh, probably at some point he was in a dungeon. Um, probably Maybe at this point he's under house arrest. And even then there are Roman guards around him, which by the way, from his, history's records, we know they were not always very nice to their prisoners. In fact, sometimes they were just really like very terrible, very abusive. And so think of what Paul's suffered. I mean, let's just start with what he suffered in his own body. Imagine being in a dark, dank, sickly dungeon. Imagine having these hard chains uh, and, and these iron cuffs around your wrists or maybe your ankles and just rubbing your skin raw, but you can't take them off. I mean, just imagine how frustrating, how difficult, how painful that would be over and over. Maybe he's, he's chained against a wall and can't really move, or maybe he, he can't move around. He might be chained to a, a Roman guard, and so maybe that guard has been abusive to him. That would be very common. I mean, imagine all the things that he's feeling in his body. I mean, he probably have all kind of bodily aches. But imagine what's happening to him in his circumstances. Can you imagine how discouraging this would be? Man, what must his prayers be like right now? Imagine he's saying, look, God, I, I just wanted to live my life for you. That's all I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get your message out, Jesus. I'm trying to get your message out, God. I'm trying to serve you, and now I'm, I'm in prison. God, how could the, these circumstances possibly be in accordance with your will? How could you want this, God? How could these circumstances possibly be good? You know, th these are probably some of the most difficult circumstances Paul has, has faced. But there's another difficulty about this moment. Look what he says. Let's keep going in verse 15. He says, Some preach Christ from envy and rivalry, but others from goodwill. The latter do it out of love, knowing that I'm put here for the defense of the gospel. The former proclaim Christ out of rivalry, not sincerely, but thinking to afflict me in my imprisonment. What then? Now pause with me right there. This is what he says. He says, look, I, it's not just that I have difficulty right now and pain in my body. It's not just that I have really just unexpected and discouraging and frustrating circumstances, but he's got, he's got people problems too. There are people that while he's in jail, there's some people while he's in prison that are being supportive, that are encouraging, but there are other people that are using this and just kind of rubbing his face in it. Like, oh, we knew Paul wasn't really legit. Or he, how, how godly could he be? They're out talking all kinds of negative things about him. And they're doing it because they feel competitive with Paul. They want to be more known as Paul or more influential than Paul. They're doing it out of jealousy and envy and rivalry. And they're using an opportunity, using this opportunity to kind of rub Paul's face in this situation. And here's the really sad thing. I mean, the people who are doing that, they're brothers and sisters that are Christians. I mean, these people know better. They know Jesus. And boy, isn't it true that sometimes people who know Jesus, they certainly don't act like Jesus sometimes. And that can be some of the most painful encounters that we have. And that's exactly what Paul is walking through. He's got pains on his body. He's got difficult, discouraging circumstances. And he's got, man, just really painful painful issues with people from people that should know better that should at this very moment be encouraging him and they're kicking him while he's down so then he says what what should i do with all this what then 
Well, let me show you what he says at verse 18, and we'll, we'll stop there. What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed, and in that I rejoice. Yes, and I will rejoice. Here's what I want you to see. It, this is crazy. Philippians is the book of the Bible that might be the most full of joy. I want you to imagine Philippians. It's like a four layer cake and it's slathered with frosting in between each layer. That's the joy. The joy, it's like slathered around the book of Philippians. I mean, it's in uh, every chapter. It's all through it. Over and over again, he talks about his joy and how he's rejoicing and encouraging others to, re to rejoice. It's just joy, joy, joy all through the book of Philippians, like a, a four-layer cake slathered with, with frosting. And here's what's so instructive about that. Man, at one of the most difficult times in Paul's life, Paul teaches us something about joy. But it's more than just, you've got to hear this. It's more than just Paul trying to stay positive. This is God, the one who made you, made me, made the universe, teaching us something about the fabric of the universe, teaching us something about how he wired our lives. He's teaching us something about joy, and I don't want you to miss this. He's, this teaches us three things. Here's the first one. Joy is possible. No matter what your circumstances are, joy is possible. You know, I think most of us think that joy is dependent on uh, three things. I think we, if, if there's some kind of pain or ailment in our body, that's difficult. I think we just kind of excuse like, well, of course I'm not joyful. I've got this chronic pain. I've got this chronic difficult. Culty, uh, dif this chronic difficulty, of course that uh, I wouldn't have joy. It's understandable. Or, we, or circumstances. It's like if I have a good day, I'll have joy. If I have a bad day, of course I won't have joy. My joy is based on are the things that I'm wanting to happen happening? Did I get that promotion I want? Is there all, my, all, all the, the, the relational hopes and dreams I have, are they going well? I think we, we think it's based on how our body feels, how our circumstances are doing. Or I think sometimes it's how... Our relationships are going. Are, is there conflict in my relationships? Are people treating me the way I want to be treated? And I think sometimes we think that joy is based on those three things or maybe even that all of those things have to align. My body has to feel good, everything has to be going well, and there's got to be peace in all of my relationships and friendships for me to feel joy. But here's what I, I want you to just see from the scripture just very simply. Look at this example of what God has done in Paul's life. His body was hurting, his circumstances were dismal, and people were treating him terribly. That should have known better, should have been his friends. He had none of those things, but he had joy. You might say, look, I don't know how to do that. I, I can't do that. There's no way I could do that. And, and that's fine. That's what we're going to dig into. But just for starters, just know that joy is possible. Joy is possible even if you don't have all those other things. Here's the second thing we learn. Joy is possible. Second thing is he says, yes, I will rejoice. Joy is not just, possi uh, not just possible. Joy is a choice. Joy is something we choose. Joy is not something that we just wait to happen to us. Joy is something that we can wake up and we can choose. But there's something else that this teaches us. Not only is joy possible, joy is something we choose. This is what Paul says here. He says, yes, and I will rejoice. He's choosing joy. Joy is a choice. And here's the thing, that's really good news. Because so much of the time we just wait for everything to align. Our circumstances to align. Our bodies to feel good. Relationships to be going well. We're waiting for everything to align for us to be able to have joy. And there's one of two problems happens with that. Either we keep waiting for everything to go well for us to feel like we can have joy. And it will very rarely come. And then it will, as quickly as it came, it will leave again. Or if we feel like everything has to align, then we're oftentimes what we do is we're inauthentic about what we're going through. And all the walls are caving in in our life, but we're just so badly wanting joy that we're just pretending it's not that bad. And we're like, no, no, everything's fine. I'm good. I'm happy. But no, there's another option. You, we can be authentic just like Paul is being with our circumstances, authentic with what we're walking through because joy is not dependent on our bodies, our circumstances, or other people. Joy is a choice. Isn't that what we want? Don't we want joy, the type of joy that circumstance that we can choose, 
that the type of joy that circumstances can't steal or another person can't steal from us. It's joy that is a choice. But here's the third thing. Joy is possible. Joy is a choice. But here's what we learned from the book of Philippians. Joy is a command. Listen, this is, if I were to flip ahead, this is Philippians chapter 3. Finally, my brothers, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same thing to you is no trouble to me and is safe for you. He says, I'm just saying it over and over and over to you. Rejoice. He's commanding us to rejoice. The Bible's commanding us to rejoice. Listen to Philippians 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. These are commands in Scripture for us to rejoice. Here's what I want you to know. God wants His children to be full of joy. God is not a killjoy. God is not saying, whoa, whoa, way too much fun happening down there. Stop all the laughing. Everyone get serious and get back to work. No, no, no. He wants His children to be full of joy of joy. In fact, joy, we learn from the Bible, is one of the fruit of the Spirit. When He places the Holy Spirit in us, the things that well up in us are things like love and joy. He wants our lives to be full of joy. Joy is possible. Joy is a choice. Joy is a command. Now you say, okay, well, what do I do with that today? How do I how do I take what I'm learning here and start releasing that in my life? Well, there's two things I wanna encourage you to do. The first is very simple. Come on this journey with us as we're learning at the beginning of the year about joy. Join us on January 2nd as we take another step and learn about joy. Go on this journey with us. Let's together learn what it looks like to live a life, no matter what comes our way this year, full of joy. Next week on January 2nd, we're gonna be talking about what Philippians says about the secret of joy. There is a secret that is counterintuitive and it's very, very elusive, but once you see it, something clicks in your mind. You're like, wow, that's so obvious, of course. And if you can just make that shift, that might be the one shift that you need to make in your life to live a life dominated by joy. It's a secret that Philippians has. We're gonna talk about that next Sunday. But we're also gonna talk about other things that Philippians says about joy. For starters, if your relationship with God, the spiritual side of your life, or maybe you call it the religious side of your life, if that part of your life is full of drudgery, if it just feels like one big chore, the Bible says something's broken, something's wrong. That is the source of the most joy in your life. And here's the good news, that's something that can, that can be fixed. That's something that with just one shift, that can change in your life. We're gonna talk about that in this series. We're also gonna talk about the power of where we focus our minds. The scripture says a lot about that. Philippians talks about that. There's some things we can set our minds on that help just release joy in our lives. I'm so excited as we go through this series. And here's the first thing you can do, is just join us through this series as we dig into this topic of joy and so that we can have a year dominated by joy no matter what happens. But here's the second thing, today, just choose joy. No matter what happens today, no matter what you're facing today, no matter what's going on in your life, just try it. Try today saying, no matter what, today I'm going to have a smile on my face and I'm going to let God well up joy in my heart. And maybe that just starts with a simple prayer. Maybe today you just simply say, God, I need your help. I'm not a very joyous person. I, I want to have that kind of joy. You know, God is in the business of transforming lives. And you know what, maybe what he wants to do in your life is to make a 180. Maybe you've kind of always been kind of a grumpy person or maybe a person really affected by other people or, or your body or your circumstances, but he wants to release joy in your life. Let him go to work on you. Maybe just ask him, God, release joy. I want that joy in my life. I want, and I'm gonna start today just to have joy. But you say, look, I, you gotta give me something. I, how, would I, how would I just start on joy? Well, let me just give you one thing. And, and actually, what I'm going to do is I've, I've actually saved the last present, the last Christmas present. I've actually saved this present. I'm going to open it with you. I mean, I've been looking for this. Hang on a second. I got this present. It's over here. It, and it's a big one, too. That's always exciting. I mean, who knows what's in here? It could be a CD player or something. I mean, it's such a huge present. Okay, look at this right here. Um, I've waited to open this present, to open it with you, okay? But here's the thing, um, before I open it, here's, here's what I wanna give you if you are trying to think through, like, man, just help me to put my joy on, on something. Here's what I would hope for you, is that the last present that you might open this year is to understand something incredible. 
no matter who you are, no matter what you've done in this life, God loves you more than you could possibly imagine. And you say, no, you don't understand. I, my life, I'm not the type of person that God loves. I've, I've made a lot of mistakes. I'm not a religious person. You know, I, I, that's not, I'm not the type of person that God really, really loves. And you know what? You're wrong. Here's the good news. This is how much he loves you. He loves you so much that Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, the Messiah, he came to reconcile you to God by paying for your sins on the cross, dying on the cross, paying for your sins so you can be forgiven. And he rose again from the dead so that you can live forever in heaven with God. He's looking, Jesus is coming to you saying, look, receive salvation, receive it today, receive forgiveness. And he's saying, just come follow me. And so here's what I want to invite you to do. I want you to receive. I want to encourage you as the final gift of this year is to receive the free gift of salvation. You just say to Jesus, Jesus, I believe. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again. And, and I'm going to follow you. And make Jesus your king. Receive Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior today. And look, you're sitting there. Maybe you're sitting there on your couch and you're watching this on your TV or watching this on your on your phone or on a laptop. Um, but if you wanna take that step, let me just lead you right now. I'm just gonna lead you in a simple prayer. And wherever you are, just silently, God hears you, He's, He loves you. And right now, let me just lead you in a prayer. You just make this your prayer to God, just right there, silently in your heart. Receive the gift of salvation. Know for sure you'll spend eternity in heaven. Just pray this in your heart to God. Say, God, I believe you're hearing me right now. I know I don't deserve your love, but I believe you love me more than I can imagine. Thank you for saving me. I believe Jesus died and that washes away all my sins. And I believe you rose again from the dead. And so Jesus, I will follow you. I make you my King, my Lord. I will follow after you. In Jesus' name, amen. Look, if you prayed that prayer, I want you to know that is the greatest gift. That's not just a gift that makes today brighter. That is a gift that changes your in, entire eternity. Et your eternity is different because of this. One day when you breathe your last, you will wake up in heaven in the presence of your Savior, in the presence of your Creator. And so here's what I want to ask you to do. Grab your phone, if you're watching us, grab your phone and go to cityrev.org faith. Here's why I want you to do that because I, we want to send you a Bible. We want to celebrate with you, and we want to send you a Bible. So go to City Rev. Take a minute now. Go to cityrev.org slash faith. Now, while you do that, I got one last present to open. I've saved it to open with you. All right, here we go. It's a big old box here. What's in it? What is going to be in it? Open it up. You've got to be kidding me. This is, this is rigged, okay? Come on. I gotta be honest, this is really challenging my joy, okay? This is one big, all right, there's only one thing to do, okay? I've just, I've just gotta own it, all right? So I just, I'm, I'm going in, okay, people? I've just, I'm just hoping it's somehow better than I thought it was. Mmm. Mmm, 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 mmm. Rookie move, you never eat the fruitcake, okay? Just so you know. Well, hey, we hope that you enjoyed today's worship experience with you and your family and just wanted to extend to you an invitation to one of our in-person services starting on Sunday, January 2nd. We're gonna be resuming this Hello Yellow series as we explore the topic of joy in the book of Philippians and would love for you to be a part of it. So at our West Pines campus, we have services at 10 a.m. and 11.45 and over at our Cooper City campus, we have a service at 11 a.m. Would love for you to be a part of it and join us. And for now, just wanted to say on behalf of City Rev Church, we hope you have a happy new year.